What we're going to talk about today is the relationship between impulse and momentum and define those two terms also. Um, you're going to find that this comes into play a lot in crashes. So we are going to be talking about crashes a lot lately. So there's a picture of my lovely car that was crashed into. So what is an impulse? An impulse is a force applied over time. So we run into something and we push on it for a long time or we push on it for a short time. The equation, when we're actually just doing the equation, is impulse equals force times time. Now the technical abbreviation for impulse is J. It makes that has no relationship to the word impulse so I generally just write imp for impulse and that equals your force times your time. But an impulse since you're applying a force over a time when you apply a force you get acceleration and when you have acceleration you have a change in velocity so a force is going to give us acceleration and acceleration is going to give us a change in velocity and when we change our velocity that's going to change our momentum now the technical abbreviation for momentum is p that does has makes no sense at all to me sorry and so i write mom momentum and so an impulse causes or is equal to the change in momentum. And we know momentum is mass times velocity. So this whole equation, we really kind of have three equations. We have impulse is force times time. Impulse is change in momentum. Or we have impulse, which is force times time, is equal to change in momentum. Change means you're going to take your final and you're going to subtract your initial. Remember, last shall be first and the first shall be last. So it's always final minus initial. But, you know, this, this part looks a lot more difficult than that part, so I generally like to keep it, keep it simple, stupid, make it a little bit easier. So some practical applications of this. Space probes. Space probes often have just a very small force on them. They send out a small jet of gas that has a very, very small force. And action-reaction, the reaction is the space probe pushes the gas, so the gas pushes the space probe with the same force. So it's a little bit tiny force, but this is constantly going. So if you think about this going for 365 days a year, and remember time is in seconds, so we would convert that to seconds, we can get a really huge impulse and if we get a huge impulse we get a large change in momentum and so you know space probes don't need a lot of force to get them going because once that force is being applied longer and longer and longer times that velocity is going to get faster and faster and faster and faster and so this is how the deep space probes get out into outer space. So what does that have to do with my car? Well this car did have a bumper that came out this far. Okay. So when the car behind it smashed it, okay, because all of this part right here collapsed, it made that force take a long time. Okay, so it didn't need, we have force times time equals our change in momentum. Okay. The car behind it's momentum changed at the same rate. But because our time was longer, the force imparted to this car, even though it like 
totally crushed the bumper and totaled the car, the force imply, applied to this bumper wasn't as large, and then that force didn't get applied to the driver of this car as much. So, yes, it wasn't pretty. Yes, he was hauled out on a stretcher, but he survived the crash. And cars are actually designed to crumple so that the impact force isn't transferred as much to the passengers of the car. And so these crumple zones that they have in cars are actually a safety feature. Now most of our cars also have airbags in them. So instead of us running into the steering wheel and stopping, bam, almost instantaneously, you know, it's the same change in momentum. You have to remember, our force times time is going to equal our change in momentum. We're still going from fast to stop. So the change in momentum is the same. But what an airbag does is it takes that impact over a longer time. So you have a smaller force. And so the airbags themselves help to diminish the amount of force that the car crash has on you and they are another safety feature that helps to cushion cushion the change in momentum okay because you're going to change your momentum anyways you're going to come to a stop against your steering wheel but you don't want to do it quickly if you do it really slowly then you only experience a little bit of force it's like hitting a pillow rather than hitting a brick wall. Sound better? So that's the very core idea of impulse and momentum. What you do mathematically depends on what you're given. Are you given the force and the time and asked to calculate the impulse? Are you given the mass and velocity and asked to calculate the impulse? Are you given the force, time, and mass and asked to calculate the final velocity? It's all versions of the impulse is your force times time, your momentum, or impulse equals force times time, and it also equals your change in momentum. So all of the problems are based on this basic idea okay it just depends on what you're given so don't try to use this equation all the time it's not going to work you have to know that this is an impulse this is a change in momentum so you might be asked what's the impulse that's this whole thing but you might only be given mass and velocity so keep your eye here on the big idea all right We'll talk to you later. See you tomorrow. Bye, girls.